All right, so we are starting indicator 18, and this is day one of indicator 18, and um, the, the name of day one is polynomials. And in indicator 18, we'll basically deal with polynomials and binomials um, in indicator 18. So if you are at home, please pause the video and get these terms and these steps written down in your three ring binder so that when I do a note check uh, on quiz day, uh, you'll have all of the necessary items in there plus some examples that we're going to do here in a minute. All right, so we've talked about these terms before. This shouldn't be anything new. So mono just means one. So a monomial is one term. Now you look at this and you see sixes, x's, and y's. Why is that considered one term? Okay, the reason is because they are all attached with multiplication. And if you think, it's just kind of a silly memory, but if you think married multiplication, right? When you get married, two become one, right? When you're multiplying, it doesn't matter how many things you multiply together. If they're all attached by multiplication, they're still considered one term, okay? They're multiplied, they're married, they're considered one. Then if you look at the blue, the binomial, Okay, bi means two, and so the binomial, you've got the 6x cubed y4 plus 3xy. That plus sign is what divides it and makes it two separate terms. When you separate, um, when you separate monomials with a plus or a minus sign, they become two. And again, kind of linking it to the whole family thing. If you think about it, you're married, you're one, but you guys have kids, you're right? You add to the family, but those kids are not one with you. They're going to get married. They're going to move on. They're going to have houses of their own, right? So they're a part of the family, but they're not considered one with you. And then polynomial, poly just means many. So anything, sometimes you'll hear trinomial. Um, if there's three terms, just because we're used to we're used to the term tri, right? Tricycle, triathlon, that kind of thing. Um, so sometimes you'll hear triomial, and that's fine. It's it really poly just means many. So um, technically, anything I put more than two because we always refer to something with two terms as a binomial. But technically, anything bigger than a monomial is a polynomial. We just get a little bit more specific when we talk about them. And we can say binomial, trinomial. Um, I don't think I've ever heard anybody ever say quadnomial, right? You just don't keep getting bigger with the numbers. So anyway, um, when we refer to larger terms, um, you'll either hear trinomial or polynomial, okay? And again, if you look at the polynomial, it's those first two terms that we saw in the binomial, but again, another plus sign, and it can be a negative sign, it doesn't matter, a plus or a minus, um, and that makes it a polynomial. All right, so the steps to uh, solving these when it is um, uh, addition and subtraction is to distribute the sign to all terms in the second polynomial, and I'll show you what we mean by that. Combine like terms. So this is just combining apples and apples, all right? And if you think about it, I wish I had actually had baskets and fruit because I think that would have been a really cool visual, but you're going to think about these as each one is a basket, right? Each one of these monomials here is a basket, okay? And the only thing you're going to do in the end is you're going to combine all the like terms. So how many, if you look at all the baskets, how many apples do you have if you add up all the apples in the baskets? If you have five apples amongst all the baskets, you would say you have five apples. Then if you look at the bananas and you've got one, one, and two in the different baskets, you would say you have four bananas, okay? Same, same thing we're going to do, only it's with math terms instead of fruit. And then you're going to put terms in order with descending exponents. And again, I'll show you what we mean by that, but if something is x to the power of two, you would put it before x to the power of one. So you want it to stair step down. Um, and again, when we do a couple of them, it'll make more sense. All right, so now let's move to some examples. So this is example one. Give you a minute to write that down in your notes. All right, so step one in your notes was to distribute 
the, the um, sign there to your second polynomial. Well, what happens? Because parentheses means distribute, right? So looking at that second polynomial, if I distribute a plus sign or a plus one to everything in that um, parentheses, is it going to change anything? Plus one doesn't change anything. So you can skip step one because it's already done for you. You don't need to. I mean, if you really feel froggy, you can rewrite it, but it's kind of a waste of time and you don't have to do that. So um, distributing that plus one doesn't change anything. So now I've just got this long string of uh, monomials, right, that are all attached with a plus and a minus. So that's when you want to think about your fruit basket. All you're going to do is look through these two baskets or these two parentheses, and you're going to find things that are alike. And they have to be identical as far as variable and exponent, right? So R to the 2 cannot be combined with an R to the 3. Those are apples and bananas. They don't, they can't be combined. So I like to save myself a little trouble, and I like to do it in order from the beginning. I'll show you what I mean. I'll show you both ways. You can pick which way you want to do it. I like to skim through here and I like to find my highest power, which in this case is a three, right? I have R to the three. I'm going to find all my R to the threes. So I have a negative eight R to the three here and I have a six R to the three here. I'm just going to combine those two. I'm going to add and subtract them. If I have negative eight R three and positive six R three, I have negative 2R3, okay? Now I look and I find my next lowest exponent. I don't have any 2s, so I'm going to go to the 1s. And so I have 4R and I have 5R. Well, they're both positive, so that gives me positive 9R. And then last, I'm going to look for um, my plain numbers without any variable whatsoever. That's always what should be tacked on at the end. So I have negative 7 and negative 5, which is negative 12. Now this says simplify. I am simplified as much as I can get because R3 and R1 cannot be combined. They're apples and bananas. The 12 there is just a plain old number. It can't be combined with either one of the R's. So you've got, right, apples, oranges, and bananas. You can't combine those. So this right here is your most simplified answer. Everything is combined, everything is reduced, and it is already in descending order, okay? Now, if you don't do it like I do, I kind of go and cherry pick. I pick my biggest, then I go to my next, then I go to my next, even if it makes me go around. And when I'm working these, like, on my own, I actually either underline them or I put a strike through them once I've used them because that helps me go through and know I've used everything I'm supposed to use. Now the other way to do it, and I'll just show you really quickly, is you can just start with this first term right here and it's a 4R. You can look through the whole problem no matter how many polynomials you have. You know, you could you can do this is just two, but you could add plus and you could do another one. You look all the way through it and you find all your four, all of your R's. And so again, you have four and five, which gives you nine R. Then I go to my next term here and it's an R to the three. So I scan my whole problem and I look for all my R to the threes. And again, I have negative two R three. Then I go to my next term here and I scan my whole problem looking for all whole numbers and I have negative 12. And then I have to scan my other problem really quickly because there could be an R squared in my second one, right? In this case, there's not, but there could be an R squared in my second one. So when you do it this way, you need to scan the whole problem to the end and make sure that you haven't missed anything. And then your last step would be rewriting it. Whoops, that's a negative. Uh, the next step would be rewriting it in descending order. I personally think this is way harder. I think it's it's easier to miss something because if it's not in the first polynomial you tend to get lazy and not look through the rest of the problem and when you're putting it in reorder it's easy like I almost did to forget that that negative goes with the two and so I almost put positive two R and it's an extra step of having to reorder so I personally don't like this way I like to just find my highest power to begin with and do it and that way when I'm done my answer is already in order okay 
All right, so let's look at another example. I'll give you a minute to get it written down in your notes. Are we good? Okay, so step one in our steps at the beginning at the top of your page should say distribute sign to all terms in the second polynomial. Well, we need to look at that. This time it's a negative sign. If I distribute a negative through everything in that second polynomial, is it going to change all my terms? When you distribute a negative, it does. It flips the sign of everything. Now you have to remember that that distribution, right, because of the parentheses, that negative has to go to all three terms. So right underneath where you've got these, you're going to now change these terms signs. Now you're not going to use this anymore. Now you're going to use the distributed rewritten terms. And basically it just changed the sign of everything. And now we do the exact same thing we did before. Okay, We scan our problem and we look for the highest power that we have and in this case, that is the power of 4. That's the highest one we have in this problem. So I have 6R4 and negative 2R4. Think of that as 6 bananas minus 2 bananas. I know that sounds overly simplified, but it really does help because for some reason when you do the, the variables and the exponents and you put all of that in there, just the simple addition and subtraction sometimes gets a little cloudy. So you've got 6R4, negative 2R4, that leaves 4R4. Okay, then you go to the next one and you look for, oops, there we go. Now I, I just did 4, so now I'm going to hunt for 3s. Well, I have one here and that's it. I don't have one in that second one, so I just simply rewrite it just like it is. Now I go to my R2s because that's the next step down. I've got one here and one here. So positive 4 and positive 8 is positive 12, and those are my R2s. And now I look for R1s. I don't have any, so I can skip that. Now I look for my plain numbers. I don't have any in the first one, but I do here in the second one. And so then this is your final answer. Again, if you do it in this way, it's already written in descending order. R4s, R3s, R2s, no R's to write, so I could skip those, and then my plain number. Okay? Any question on that? All right. One more like this. This is the one. Actually, let's, uh, let's skip this one. I don't think we need to beat a dead horse. I think you guys are good with the distribution, right? we distribute that negative, you don't have to write this one down. Distribute the negative, it's going to change the sign, so you have negative x cubed, positive 6x, and then negative 3x4, and then you're just combining like terms again. So I'm going to skip this one just because I don't want to make you take too, too many notes. But I do want to address this one. So step one is distribute a sign. There is no sign to distribute because when we distribute a positive one, nothing changes. So we can skip that. All right, so step one is done, nothing to distribute, so we can move to the second step, which is combining like terms. Again, I'm going to scan my problem, and I'm going to look for my highest power, which in this case is r to the 3. Okay, 3 is my highest power here. I have negative 8 and a positive 1. Okay, negative 8 and positive 1 of my r to the 3s leaves me negative 7r3. 
Now I go to my next power down, which would be a two, and I scan for those. I have positive three R, oops, didn't change colors. I have positive R3, there we go, or I have positive R three R squared, and I have negative three R squared. What happens to the R squareds? Yeah, they cancel out. They reduce to zero. I don't have any left. I don't need to write them. Okay, now I look for R1s. Scan my problem. Don't have any R1s. Now I look for my plain numbers. Okay, I have a 2 and a negative 2. What happens to those? My final answer is just this right here. That's all that's left. Everything else canceled out. And that's okay. When you are adding a bunch of monomials together, you never know what your final, it, there's not a set number of how many you have to have left over in your answer because it's all going to depend on whether or not they cancel each other out. So just scan your problem, look for your highest power, find them all, go to your next power, find them all, go to your next power, and just go all the way down from highest power to plain old number every single time. And if you do it that way every time, you'll be fine. All right. The next section, that was adding and subtracting. This next section, if you'll notice the directions, it says find the product. What does product mean? Multiplication. multiplication. Good. Product means multiplication. Well, thanks to indicator 17, this won't be a problem. We know how to multiply monomials, right? We just finished that. So first things first is when you see parentheses, think distribution, okay? If it helps you at first, I like to draw the lines. It helps me remember that that seven gets multiplied by everything inside the parentheses. And then it's just back to indicator 17, okay? Seven times seven V is 49 V. And then seven times negative five is negative 35, and that's your answer. Can you combine anything? Can you simplify that, that step takes you back to the first part, which is adding and subtracting. And we know that we can't add and subtract a variable with a non-variable, so that's it. That's as combined as I can get. And so for this, and we'll review this tomorrow, so I didn't write out the steps for this because these are all pretty simple, but the steps for this section that we'll write out tomorrow is that you distribute by multiplying, and then you go back to the steps we wrote down today, which is combine like terms, right in descending order, all of that, which is why we learned that part before we go to this part. All right, so let's look at this next example. And I'm gonna kinda color code this just a little. So if you have colored pencils or whatever, it's, sometimes it's nice, but you don't have to have it. So we're gonna go there, there, and there. So distribution rules say that that 8 gets distributed to every term in the parentheses, doesn't matter how many it is. So when I take 8 times n squared, I simply get 8n squared. When I take 8 times 7n, I get 56n. And when I take 8 times 3, I get positive 24. Take a quick glance. Are there any like terms that you combined? The answer is no. So that's your final answer. If you understood indicator 17, this part of it is a whole lot easier, okay? All right, so what happens when your outside monomial has a variable? Doesn't change how you do it. It just makes you put into play what you learned last indicator. So again, we're gonna distribute. Give everybody a minute to get it written down. All right, so again, we just distribute. Let's look at, we have 2b times b squared. Well, we know from last indicator, the two just stays a two, right? And then b times b squared, well, now we're multiplying, and so we have to add those exponents together. So this is technically a one, so that becomes b3. Oh, I forgot my b, didn't I? That looks a little better. 
Now we do 2b times negative 3b. Well, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and b1 times b1 is b2, All right? Because the 1 plus the 1. Now we go out to the end term. 2b times negative 5 is negative 10b. Nothing to combine. You've got b3, b2, b, which is really b1. So they're all in nice descending order. And there's your final answer there. And I think, yeah, we've got one more example here. And I want to, I'm not going to rewrite it. I'm not going to do it like that. But if in that polynomial, in the parentheses, if the negative 4K had come first, when you distributed, everything would have been out of order. So just your last step would be write everything in descending order. But these come nice in descending order, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so same idea. And it's just taking that distribution one step at a time. First, you have 3k squared times that first term, 4k squared. So 3 times 4 is 12. k squared times k squared is k to the 4. Then you have... 3k squared times negative 4k. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And k squared times k to the 1 is k cubed. And then last, you have 3k squared times 7. And both are positive, so it's positive 21k squared. Your answer is 432. So everything's in descending order, and you're good. Okay? Any questions? All right, for those of you at home, Go to the bottom of the page, click that gray load button, and it will load your assignment in Kami. Make sure you show all of your work and circle your final answers, and then submit it through Kami. And of course, you can email me if you have any questions, and I can always set up a Google Meet to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to help you if you have any problems.